welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Sina and on this channel, we explore how we can learn, grow and serve to our highest potential so that we can live fulfilled lives and collectively make the world a better place. Today, I want to talk about getting closer to your true self and I'm going to share a personal experience with you that has been so empowering in terms of my personal development. Now, before I go into that, you may be thinking, what is my true self? Well, your true self is basically prior to any conditioning. When we came into this world, we were abundant. We were full of life and potential and the possibilities were infinite. We were playful, creative, fearless, and not afraid of judgment, failure, embarrassment. We don't care about other people's opinions. We were also unaware of the social norms, what we could and couldn't say, how we should and shouldn't behave. We expressed ourselves, we were free. Think back to when you were a child. Does this resonate with you at all? Do you sometimes feel like you have this burning desire inside of you to do certain things, but that voice in your head is holding you back? It happens to all of us. Over time, since the day we were born, we have been conditioned. We have been bombarded with all these rules which change our mental models and enforce us to conform to these social norms. We lose our creativity, we lose our uniqueness and something someone said to us stick with us and we carry it on for years, even for our entire lifetime. We were given labels. You're an introvert, you're an extrovert, you're fat, you're skinny. I can go on and on. At that stage, we don't know any better. We soak it all in like a sponge and as we get older, we resist looking back and challenging some of those constructs that were imposed onto us. And that is what holds us back from reaching our higher self. The reality is that we are managing ourselves for our peers rather than our higher self, which limits our potential. You hear that inner child screaming at you and questioning why you keep putting on this facade, but you keep silencing your inner child. Now, I've been doing a lot of self-discovery work over the past few years. And one moment which really stood out to me during this period was an initiation I took part in. It really presented me with those breakthrough moments. This initiation was called the Breaking the Mask initiation and was led by Gerard Adams. Gerard is an incredible leader. He's one of the most inspirational and authentic people I know. And he's well known for selling his company Elite Daily to the Daily Mail in 2015 for $50 million. So if you want to know more about him, please go and check him out. So back to the initiation, Gerard mentioned that there's a Japanese proverb that states that we have three faces or three masks. The first one is what we show to the world. The second one is what we show to our close friends and family. And the third one is what we don't show to anyone. This is what we keep to ourselves. Now, the goal of the initiation is to break those masks and just show up as your true self. And if we showed up as our true self and really owned our story, we can accomplish anything we desire in our unique way. Now, this Japanese proverb reminded me of a book I read a few years ago called The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life by Irving Goffman. And I was introduced to Goffman's work at university, one of my lecturers actually combined psychology and sociology with computer science in his teachings. When it came to gathering requirements from customers to build solutions for them using technology, he would emphasize Goffman's theory that people will not tell you exactly what they want. You have to uncover it. It's like when Henry Ford said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. This also ties nicely with the tip of the iceberg analogy where you only see what is at the surface above the water, but the core is deep under the water, which is not visible. Goffman called this front stage and backstage behavior. In his book, he refers to the theater where what people see on the front stage is different to what happens backstage. It's the same when you're at a restaurant, the waiter or waitress puts on a brave and calm face in front of the customers when there could be chaos in the kitchen. Now we do the same in everyday life. We put on different faces, different masks. We don't present our true self. 
Now, before I go into my revelations from the initiation, I want to tell you a story of the Golden Buddha, which I think will demonstrate nicely the importance of breaking these mats. There are many versions of the story, and I'm going to give you my rendition of it. So, centuries ago, there was this massive Golden Buddha statue located within a monastery in Thailand. Many people would go worship the statue. And in the 18th century, the Burmese army were going to invade and they were notorious for melting gold of the nations that they conquered. In order to prevent this from happening, the monks covered the Golden Buddha with plaster and clay to hide its true value. It now looked like a normal statue and did not have much perceived worth. When the Burmese army invaded, they left the statue alone. They ignored it completely. Hundreds of years later, this monastery was getting renovated and the statue was required to be moved. Whilst the monks were moving the statue, a glimmering light emerged from one of the cracks on the surface of the statue. The monks then grabbed their chisels and started chipping away at the statue, removing the plaster and clay to find that the entire statue was actually made of solid gold they had discovered a hidden treasure. The Golden Buddha statue was in pristine condition. The plaster and clay had protected it for centuries through all these turbulent times. But the true beauty of what was underneath was never shown to others. We can relate the story to ourselves. Each and every one of us has that golden glimmer within, but we have covered it with clay and plaster as our defense mechanism to just get by. We think that we're building resilience, but we are actually depriving everyone from our service. What we can learn from this is that the beauty lies within and we have to chip away at the coverings and layers that we have added to ourselves to really shine, to show up as our true self. Now onto my Breaking the Mask initiation, I wrote four letters. One was to my old self, which was a letter of forgiveness and appreciation. Forgiveness for my own and others' mistakes, failures, and egos, but appreciation that the ego has brought me to this point today. Then I burned that letter. That was the old me done. The second letter was to my younger self where I acknowledged all that he had done for me. The third letter was from my younger self to my current self. And I wrote this letter with my opposite hand to make it look like it was a child's handwriting. Now this letter was the most emotional one as the younger self is basically our inner child talking to our current self. Now you can say that your inner child is most aligned to your true self. He was pissed with me, but despite being angered, he was proud of how far I'd come with all the obstacles that were thrown my way. He admired that he still held my values even though our relationship had drifted apart. He was aware that society and other limiting beliefs were jeopardizing our relationship and that it wasn't intentional. A key message he said, which stuck to me was, if you want to get to your higher self, if you want to go to the next level, you need to break this mask that has been a barrier between us. Stop listening to the noise, get closer to your true self, pursue your purpose and show the world who you really are. And straight after that, I shed a few tears. That dialogue was immensely powerful and liberating and enabled me to connect with my inner child. I gave him a platform for his voice to be heard. And the fourth and final letter was from my higher self to my current self, where I wrote about who I had become and what I had accomplished. This enlightened me when I got a glimpse of who I was capable of becoming. And after this initiation, I looked back at my childhood to better understand my inner child. During my childhood, I was playful, constantly smiling, laughing, and entertaining everyone. I was always singing and dancing, really putting on a show for my family, and I wasn't afraid to express myself. And as time went on, I became less playful and more serious. Looking back at it now, I think part of it was due to believing that if I wanted to be successful, I needed to knuckle down on my education and eradicate the messing around and relaxed mindset. However, this wasn't me. It was a belief construct that I had imposed onto myself. I also wanted not to be dependent on my parents. I felt they had already done so much for me. I just wanted to create a life where I could start giving back to them. This narrowing down of focus actually drove me away from my true self. 
I moved away from home for university and I was leaving all my friends and family behind. I started university full of confidence. I had the swagger about me. I was ready to take on the world. And I was fortunate enough to have a childhood friend that was already studying there. And he introduced me to his circle of friends. I integrated into his friendship group quite quickly. And as the youngest member of the friendship group, I was surrounded by veteran final year students that knew all the ins and outs, which eased my transition into university life. At this point, I felt protected, untouchable. The first few weeks were wild and I couldn't have asked for a better introduction to university. I was out almost every single night, having the time of my life. Soon after, I'd find myself in a relationship and in my second year, we moved in together whilst most of my other friends had graduated and left. It was great in the sense that I became more grounded during my second and final years to focus on my studies. And I couldn't keep up the partying lifestyle for too long. I graduated from university with the highest grade in my cohort and already had a graduate job lined up. What more could I want at this stage? But physically and mentally, I wasn't in good shape. In my final year, I didn't give my health much attention. I would order takeaways way too much and I became complacent. So my health had deteriorated along with my appearance. I was constantly stressed over work and deadlines and I was so fixated on graduating with a high mark that I forgot about everything else. I came out of university looking like a Teletubby and without a girlfriend. And not even knowing why things ended in that relationship made me self-conscious. I thought that I wasn't enough. We never had that talk to get some closure. So now my confidence is completely shattered. On the surface, I've graduated with a good degree and already have a job to walk into, but inside I've hit rock bottom. Now on the back of that, I have to move to Aberdeen in Scotland to start my graduate job, but this time it's a whole different ball game. You have a senior with low confidence and in the worst shape of his life and with no childhood friend there for support. So from the start, I had to integrate and connect with people, but my confidence was down the drain. My mask to the outside world had now changed to quiet and reserved instead of confident and energetic. I was worried about what other people will think of me. I made friends, but I wasn't myself. Those friends see me differently to my childhood friends. People close to me would make comments about my lack of desire to form relationships with others, which was true. But it hurt to hear that when they didn't know the context. I would just shut myself off from the outside world, just keeping myself in my own little bubble because that way I was protected and I couldn't get hurt. All this time I knew I wasn't myself. My inner child kept trying to talk to me, but I wouldn't listen. It was like I was holding his head underwater, not allowing him to breathe, but would occasionally let him up for a brief second to catch a breath. For years, this would eat me up inside, knowing that I had this potential within, but not having the courage to unleash it. My time in Aberdeen lasted a year and a half before I moved to Norway on an international assignment. He had more disruption, less stability. I had to start those social interactions again. Yet this time it was even more difficult. I made a big effort to connect with people, but it just wasn't working. They all had their own friendship groups and agendas and it was challenging to find a way in. I felt isolated and couldn't bear spending time in solitude. So I started traveling most weekends to a new country as a distraction. The more I was on the move, the less I would be stuck with my own thoughts. I was constantly battling with my inner child subconsciously, but I never took the time to hear him out to get everything out in the open. I was just running away from it all. Another international assignment came around. This time I moved to Canada for a year and it was a similar situation to my time in Norway, but felt less isolated. After my assignment in Canada, I moved to London and finally I was closer to home and closer to friends and family and I felt more grounded. It was only over the last couple of months where I really started to look inwards and do some self-discovery. I hadn't taken the time to do this before. I noticed that I wasn't making decisions based on where I wanted to be. In fact, I didn't even 
know where I wanted to be. I was just going with the flow this whole time. Connecting with my inner child reminded me of what I was passionate about. I realized that I wasn't even in the driving seat. I was moving around based on other people's agendas rather than my own. I wasn't utilizing my strengths and I didn't have clarity on my purpose. All this conditioning and beliefs were restricting me from moving forward. The dip in confidence was mainly linked to my physical shape. For years, I kept feeling sorry for myself and kept reminiscing on how I used to be in good shape in the past. I wasn't taking any action in order to show up as my true self. I needed this revelation, this wake up call, this awakening. I needed this reconnection to remind myself of who I am and who I want to become. And that was my experience. In order to serve the world with our unique skills and talents, the first step is to break that mask and show up as your true self. Really own your story and people will gravitate towards your authenticity. You'll show up with more confidence and you'll have more energy as it is draining to put on a show as someone else. There is this movement happening where we are starting to wake up and notice that the systems and conditioning are not serving our purpose. I encourage you to take part in your own breaking the mask initiation. And it's not going to be easy. It will be uncomfortable. You will need to get vulnerable. You may shed some tears like I did and you may have to revisit some of the traumas and pain that you went through. But you will come through the other side stronger and will experience ascension towards your higher self. Opening up and sharing is one of the most powerful things you can do. And this isn't a one-time activity, it's a continuous process. We all have that golden Buddha inside us and it would be a real shame if we never got the opportunity to see it. Now, I want to close this episode with a poem by Rumi. When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me. There is a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. My interpretation of this poem is that what I think I want refers to the noises in our head what society has pushed onto us, that conditioning and constructs. We are constantly keeping up with the Joneses, comparing our lives to others, which as a result causes stress. Find solitude and stillness and it will come to you.